So now let us proceed on it. How you brief senior counsels. Uh, so you need to know three things. Who to brief, when to brief, how to brief effectively. So we'll do this one by one. But before we do this, uh, let's understand who to brief, right? So what are the considerations in mind that people have while choosing a senior for a matter? What considerations you should have when you're going to be a senior? Uh, which senior to brief is an important consideration, right? Uh, I, as I told you, some people actually do it so well that that's the reason why they're brought into picture. Uh, people don't know why it works when they are briefing, but this is one of the reasons why it works. They know exactly who to brief for which matter. What are the factors that are to be kept in mind? The fees. So that's the first consideration, of course. You first ask the client how much he is he can pay or he's willing to pay, at the most what he, he, he would pay, right? And then you need to work it out. Then the other consideration is, it's related to the fees itself. Do you brief the senior regularly? Will he give you a concession? So that is in the factor that comes into play, right? So if you keep briefing a senior regularly, you do get concessions. Uh, okay, so specialization on the area of the senior, this is very important and therefore you should know who is arguing. So even when you're reading judgments, I think it's a useful practice to see who is, you see that there's a particular senior is getting more tax matters, a particular senior is getting more arbitration matters. Or a particular senior is good with this judge. That's also something so before whom the, who, the matter will be listed is in the question, that plays a very important role. Because that's what you see before certain benches, uh, certain senior appears a lot. So then he gets briefed a lot before that bench. Why it works, etc. It's not a question you really ask. You just focus on what will work here, right? When to brief. When the matter involves a complex question. So, the, so these are the various times when people choose to brief a senior counsel. Of course, if your client is willing to pay, ready to pay, wants to have a senior, then no questions are to be brief a senior. But when the matter involves a complex issue, you definitely think that this is something that only a, a senior will be able to handle, etc. And therefore, or you anticipate that the other side will get a senior because it's a complex issue, and therefore you will bring a senior into picture uh, when the law is not on your side. So often uh, the issue becomes complex just because the law is not on your side. So sometimes it's because the issue is huge, but the actual legal issue is not that complex, it's simple. But sometimes it so happens that it's a simple issue, but uh, since the law is not on our side, therefore they come to the senior. So I always say that it's the wrong side that comes to us. So uh, working with Mr. Krishi uh, got me an experience of working uh, on the wrong side. So, so we always get matters where the law is not in our favor, where the order has been against us, et cetera, et cetera. Right? And then you have to think. And so you start thinking from the dead end then that, that it's against us. The law is against us. And what do we do? Right? So that really brushes. Proper off. translations are not there of any regional language documents or even Hindi documents. They will raise defects and objections. If you don't do it properly, it will go for a toss. You have to refile. It won't come for hearing. Okay. So you have to do all of that properly. And after that, there'll be a hearing uh, in which that's the notice stage. Okay. Hearing may, if it's dismissed, then Tata bye bye, nothing happening in the matter. If it's accepted, then a notice is issued to the other side. Okay. And now Sanjata will continue. Right. So uh, when do we brief a senior counsel? So there are certain stages where you will feel the need to brief. So one would be the notice stages that we were saying, otherwise it's start up by bed. If it's a statutory appeal, then you have a right to be heard. In that case, you don't need a senior to get a notice issued. But if it is an SLP or if it is an appeal under certification, etc., then you, and even for DRIT, you may need a senior to get the notice issued. So you need to take that call, which senior. There are seniors with face value. so. They are briefed for all sorts of matters. Like Mr. Kushir is briefed for, sometimes people ask, oh, what's his specialization? But he has a face value of these one, one of the five top lawyers, and therefore he's briefed for, for
for all sorts of matters, right? So that's one stage where you would want to brief a senior. The other stage, again, and the notice stage as well. Sometimes you may think the case is strong, notice will get issued, but there is an interim relief that you are also seeking. You are seeking a stay, and it may be difficult to get a stay. And if you don't get a stay, then finally, when the matter is being heard, it may not mean much, right? So, in order to to get that, you may need a senior. So, these are the various reasons why the stay is the most difficult part, where you need a senior, or you know, clients insist that a good senior is there because. It's like interim injunction in a civil case, and it's like bail in a criminal case. Okay, I'm giving you like very, very simple equivalents. Ki if you were going to get arrested before trial, get bail or anticipatory bail, life sorted, or get the FIR quashed. In a civil case, get interim injunction or, or to rest to have status quo or to prevent the other side from doing something. Here at the Supreme Court level, you get a stay on the earlier order, which means the earlier order is not going to come into operation till the Supreme Court hears and decides. That's it. Right. Uh, stakes are high. That's another reason why, at the Supreme Court level, people want to brief a senior advocate. Right. Uh, the Abida, if you want to jump in at any point, please feel free. Uh, the bigger factor, however, would be the willingness ability. As as I started with this, that you first need to check with the client if he's willing, if he's able to pay, and then you get a senior. So these days, of course, you can get a senior at any fee. So. Uh, depends um, the different kinds of senior advocates, as well, right? So it's not like senior advocate will be charging a lot. Just like it's not like oh, senior advocates don't pay their junior. So these are certain myths that people have in the profession or students sometimes have, and that affects their ability to choose, uh, make the right decision for themselves. But uh, such things don't happen, right? So. When the other side has already engaged a senior, as I told you, sometimes you anticipate the other side will, and therefore you get a senior. Sometimes the other side has already got it, and therefore it's always preferable to get a senior on your side as well, uh, right? And you need somebody to match the face value. So whenever somebody beats Mr. Kushi, for example, somebody else beats Mr. Sibyl, and vice versa, right? Uh, your job is to sometimes what people do again. That's a very uh, strategic move so some people also send us a brief so that you know the other side cannot be right so that's in the strategy people do we'll come to that when to send the brief to the senior uh, your job is to give advice that the client decides so that you are not blamed later for wasting their money that also happens sometimes even the senior cannot get the job done and therefore you are answerable to the client uh, why is briefing necessary in the first place? I think we started off with this a uh, bit more on it. Uh, so, when you're briefing a senior, some people said, "Oh, you're making it understandable, etc." But it's all the one of the purpose also is to give instructions on behalf of the client. So, a senior is not supposed to directly be in touch with the client. So, you are the one who are acting on behalf of the client and giving him instructions as to what the client wants him to do, right? Learning how to brief can be an important skill. We are coming to how to brief part, how to brief effectively in a moment. Uh, it is bound to have a bearing. A good senior advocate has, on an average, five to ten matters. ASGs can have way more, and ASGs are not briefed by in any briefing councils. They are briefed by their own juniors, right? Uh, so then what do they do? So I was telling a bit the other day that uh, when Mr. Parag Tripathi was the ASG, he had a long list of matters, right? And they were all before the Chief Justice. And uh, he would write, so there was this column that was left by the clerk for him. And he would write his points just in one word, right? That this is for notice, and this, this has to happen, etc. One day he lost that paper and he did not know what to argue and he had to seek adjournment in all the matters that day. So uh, when you're working with the ESG, it can be that. It can mean that you have to brief in so many matters and the files come only at 7 p.m. They get assigned. That happens with all the state councils, all the panel councils representing the government. So then all those files are to be managed by the juniors. They need to brief at what point, maybe in the morning at 9.30 to start briefing, right? 
uh, now as i was telling you the briefing council is given at time slot only in the evening and that's because so that the senior can remember till next day right you mostly get an hour it's if it's too bulky and this for final hearing sometimes you get two hours or so sometimes it gets stretched etc so now this is a challenge to make it assimilable within an hour so one of the points that you guys were saying to make it understandable definitely that's part of your job uh, you are uh, trying to make it assimilable within that one hour and if, so that the senior understands easily so that he does not have to go through the entire file because it won't be possible so you wouldn't know which part he went through which part he didn't he didn't go through so it's your job to make him go through those parts right that you think are important so that he remembers well even if sure he does not get time to have a look